is um, good morning YouTubers and anybody else that happens to be looking. We wanted to make a video of our sawmill because if we can say or do anything that would be uh, beneficial to other sawyers, we'd, we'd like to be able to say or do it. And uh, we have seen several uh, makes of sawmill and uh, when we finally decided to buy a sawmill we bought an SMG Champion. They're built uh, right here in Canada in Quebec City really which is uh, only about four hours distant from here. We found this to be a really really good little mill and as I said we'd like to tell you some of the features so that if you're looking to buy a mill you may be influenced to take a serious look at this uh, SMG Champion. It is a, a really nice little mill. When we bought it we also bought a, a, a few little uh, uh, options or additions to it for instance, we bought these uh, log loaders. I'm not much of a believer in, in uh, buying something that's too complicated because if it's complicated, it's going to be complicated to repair. This mill is basic. I think the company would probably refer to it as an entry level mill. But one of the things that we bought was their, their loading ramp. And it's really a, a good working little, little thing. They have teeth on it so that once you put a log up on, it won't roll backward on you. And you rise up to the level of the trailer on a three-step process. And if you want to put it up on the first level, take a break. Set it up on the second level take another little break, put her over in the third level, take another little break. You haven't overexerted yourself. It's a really, really sensible addition to a manual sawmill, which this is. We bought the trailer with the sawmill because we, we take it from place to place on the property and that means we don't have to uh, bring our logs to the mill. We bring our mill to the log. And it's easily done. We just hook onto it and away we go. When they built the trailer, they put wheels on it, sufficiently small, that um, when you're walking back and forth with the carriage, it doesn't interfere with your progress. Same time, it's sufficiently large that you can go down the highway at typical highway speeds, no problem whatsoever. <clears throat> the other thing about this mill is that the paint is solid, solid, solid. Uh, we've had the mill for three years and uh, it hasn't faded, it hasn't chipped, it hasn't done anything that it uh, should not do. In a bit of time I'll uh, put a log on and show you how the, the mill runs, but uh, most, if not all of you, can probably saw a log uh, as well as I do or better than I do. You probably know more about it than I do. But <clears throat> we bought the machine basically for personal use and uh, it serves the purpose extremely, extremely well. As I mentioned, the paint is solid. When, when we bought it, it came with four jacks and it also has four uh, legs so that it's, it's very easy to set up to level and once leveled it stays level. If you work here for a week it stays level. If you work here for a month it stays level. So it's a really good little, little machine that way. The Manufacturer, I think, considered just about anything and everything that would make the mill convenient 
to the user. We have a, a bolt here, sort of it's not in use. You can put a bolt in through and it holds the carriage just as steady as can possibly be. When you're transporting the mail, there's a bolt here and a bolt there. It balances the carriage directly over the uh, wheelbase. You don't know the trailer is behind you. Um, I drive a Toyota half ton. has an eight cylinder motor in it, of course, but you just don't know the mail is behind you. So that's convenient. The other really convenient thing, which is missing on a lot of mills included in this one, is that you have log rollers, a system of log rollers, so that when you put your log up, if it isn't quite positioned correctly, you can roll it up and down the mill easily and position it to, to be uh, dogged on. The other nice thing about this mill is it has two tow boards. So it doesn't make a bit of difference if the top of the log comes out on this end or the top of the log comes out on that end. You can adjust the, the uh, angle up as you wish to uh, make it level. Another really nice feature on this mill, when you put a log on, you, you don't have to turn a screw, you don't have to flip a clamp, you don't have to do much of anything. These log dogs are built, tapered in such fashion that it's not possible to, to uh, uh, hit them with the blade using normal caution. And when you put them on, all you do is twist them sideways, and the more you twist, the stronger it, it uh, hooks. There are two log dogs, one there, one there. The mill will accept a minimum of a four-foot log. Put it here. There's your log dog. There's a post there, a post there. And this is a, a movable post. It's really, really, really handy. You don't have to lift the back post up and down. This serves that function. It can go up that high. That will accommodate a really big log or you can put it down there, it'll accommodate a smaller log you won't run into. A really, really good feature of this mill is that the sawyer only has to watch the right hand side to keep his blade clear of the cam dogs or any other piece of metal that might be over here. Sawyer watches this side of the mill. This stopper, carriage stopper, watches the other side of the mill. It glides along and if there is a piece of metal, a post or anything up high enough that this hits, it stops the carriage and you lower the piece of metal to the point that the stopper goes by. If the stopper goes by, the blade won't hit a piece of metal. So that's a really, really good feature. <clears throat> Another feature that is missing on a lot of mills is that many mills make the carriage rail a part of the frame. That is, they extend the frame up and they make a rail out of the frame. That's great, but if something happens, if the rail fails in some fashion or another, I'm not sure how you'd repair it. This mill is built <clears throat> with a rail that is bolted to the frame. If something happens to the rail, all you have to do is install a new rail, and uh, a few bolts accomplishes that. Other likable features, as I say, this is an entry-level mill. Okay. This is an entry-level mill. It has 13 horsepower Honda single-cylinder motor. Uh, Honda is known for its reliability. This one is reliable. It has an electric start. You don't have to pull a cord. You don't have to do anything. Turn the switch and it'll start. And I think that's a really, really good uh, uh, motor for this mill. And it, it uh, is quick enough. It'll wear you out. You won't wear the machine out. It, the speed of it will wear you out. Another 
Another uh, piece of equipment this machine has is the, the uh, uh, pressure gauge. Typically you'll run somewhere between 12 and 1500 pounds on the pressure gauge and it isn't a screw or, a, or a, a, a clip or whatever, it's an actual gauge. So if you're running it successfully at 1400 pounds per square inch, you know that you adjust it 1400 pounds like that. If you want it at a thousand pounds, you adjust it back to a thousand pounds. And it's always reliable. Whatever you set it at, that's what it is. The other thing that's handy on this mill and missing on some others, not to denigrate others, but it's very handy. If you want to cut two inch lumber, it's marked out, two inches. If you want to cut one and a half inch lumber, it's marked out one and a half. One inch lumber, it's marked out. Three quarter inch lumber, it's marked out. Or you can use scale, which is uh, marked out in eighth inch. It's a really, really handy scale. It doesn't tell you the number of, of board feet, but you can figure that out yourself. The uh, length and feet by the width and feet by the thickness and inches gives you board feet. You don't have to have a scale that tells you that. The other little item that works good, this, this guide is adjustable to, to the diameter of the log. Come back there, move it on out to within a few inches of the log and it keeps the, the uh, uh, tension uh, even across the board. Another really good thing is they have a tank, I don't know what the material is, but it's white metal, a white metal water tank. The cover is, is white metal. The neck is plastic. You won't get any rust in your water. You won't have any breakage from a plastic tank, so on, so on, so on. It has a, an on-off water uh, valve. This is a main valve. It's open. It's closed. And this adjusts the water flow uh, to a high degree. You can go from almost turned off to full open using this. And depending on the diameter of the log, the species of the log, so on, you can adjust this mini gauge to uh, accommodate whatever it is that, that you're using. The 13 horsepower motor doesn't drink much fuel. This tank, if you fill it in the morning, will run you all day, no problem at all. If you're young and uh, ambitious, maybe at four o'clock you might have to fill it up, but the tank will basically run the, the mill for the whole day. Those are things I think are worth worthwhile and if I think of something else I'll mention it to you when I when I uh, start the mill up. We will put a log through but as I said most of the people watching this uh, video, if anybody watches at all, will be familiar with song and will do at least as good and probably a better job than I will. But that's the mill and we think it's probably the best mill for the money that you can buy. Otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't make a video about it. So we'll, we'll shut down for a, a second <clears throat> start the mill up and do a log and you can see how it cuts. Our, our uh, neighbor came over to uh, uh, supervise and work away <laughs> and uh, in a minute we'll put a log on and show you how, how we saw them. Thanks for watching so far. We're going to roll a small log up on just so you can see how we do it. it it doesn't take a lot of effort. As I said, those ramps are built in such a way that <clears throat> you put them up one step, put them up a second step, put them up a third step, they're on. The other uh, 
important thing about a log is that the the pit should be a, as close center as it can whenever you whenever you saw a tree that grows on a flat piece of ground the pith will basically be pretty near the center of the log not necessarily the center but pretty close to the center if there's a sweep in the log you'll find that the pith is off center by quite a bit you won't get near as good lumber out of it <clears throat> so if it's on uneven ground poor lumber if there's a sweep you'll get poor lumber out of it if the pith is in the center you'll tend to get better lumber so long as you try to keep the pith in the center so that when you put the log up you adjust the tow boards and cut straight with the grain and the pith will remain center of the cant. Uh, the other important thing, the only thing I know of that's important anyway, when you're sawing a log, when you start the blade in, start slowly because the blade will build up a lot of internal pressure in the first part of the cut, say the first foot. And if you force the saw at all, you're going to break a blade. So ease back on that first foot thereafter. Uh, just an even, steady pressure keeps the blade level. The alignment, there are a lot of things uh, factor into keeping the blade from being wavy. But a thing that a lot of people don't think about is if you feed too hard or you don't feed hard enough, the blade will wave just a little bit and your lumber won't be as good as you want it to be. Those are probably the only two things I know that, that uh, some people don't already know. Anyway, Jim and I will put this log up on. We'll run it through. You'll see how the saw works and that'll be the end of the video. I think we're okay there. We're just adjusting the tow board to what we think puts the log about level, even with the pith. We're all set. Set the cam dog. I think I need it up just a tiny bit more. I could measure, but I'm too stubborn to. I've seen people measure and measure and measure and measure, and they'll get it perfect. I don't do much of anything that's perfect. Ask my wife. Saw starts. Very best. I adjust my tension to about. 1400. It's a carbureted saw, but it starts with.
tuned in. I think that's a beautiful little saw. I think that in value for dollars spent, you can't possibly do better. I'm not paid by any company to say or do anything, but I thought I would share with you what this mill is and what it will do. You cannot go wrong. If you have a mill that you completely love and it works great, that's good. Keep it. If you're looking for a mill, SMG Champion is a really, really good mill to look at. You'll be impressed. I think you'll buy it. And I think you'll be happy with your purchase. Thank you for watching. I can't say any more. Didn't we do some good?